little weight of worry on your shoulders. What, what will the world be like for our kids? But if we run into that future with much more expensive energy as well, if we realize we can no longer continue to burn fossil fuels and we have to cut back on our overall energy use because biofuels are not nearly as easy as fossil fuels. You have to have a lot of biofuels. We could have a combination of things, wind, solar, biofuels, and we could make up for a lot of the fossil fuels, but we need to be far more energy efficient than we are now. So in that future, we'd have to cut back on the amount of meat that we eat. We could still maintain a nutritionally sound diet. Uh, and farmland would need to go up a little bit more in the omnivores, omnivores delight. Farmland is 15% of New England's acreage, and here it's going up to 18% of New England's acreage. So not, not dramatically more. And if we, if we do this regional reliance diet, we would be growing 68% of what we eat. So, you know, you, you could carry out the trajectory if you want to get it up to 75%, and if you're willing to eat a little less pineapple and mango, okay, okay, we, we can get this up to 75, 85%, uh, whatever is absolutely necessary. But in this scenario, we are providing all of the, the um, feed grain for beef, and the, the beef and dairy are both grass-fed in the omnivores delight and the regional reliance. So there's just a little bit of grain that's being provided for beef and dairy. Uh, and the, the difference here, 100% of our fruit, we're eating blueberries, raspberries, um, other things that grow here, apples, instead of mangoes and pineapples. Um, and we could be growing 80% of our grains and beans. So we're still not up to 100% in this scenario, but we're much, much closer. So, that's the vision. So Food Solutions New England has adopted this uh, vision as its guiding principle, you could say. But Food Solutions New England does a lot. We have been holding these annual food summits that I mentioned, and the, the New England food vision was first presented, I think, in 2011 at the very first food summit a lot of people were interested. We worked on it a while, came back, presented the next iteration, 2012, and then 2013, and then we finally published it in 2014. So it benefited from a lot of input from people from all over New England who were interested in the idea, but were saying things like, well, what about urban agriculture? And, and actually, it is included in there now. Or, can't we grow all of our own food? And Brian over and over insisting, no, we really, really can't unless our population goes down considerably. So we, we continue to hold these annual food summits. We've got one coming up in June. Uh, we're also encouraging each state to create its own food plan. The New England Food Vision is not prescriptive and it doesn't include specific policies because those vary state by state what's appropriate for Massachusetts, what Massachusetts needs to do is not exactly what Rhode Island needs to do. It has a very different situation, a very different uh, history and political context. So each state in New England now has developed its own food plan and Food Solutions New England brings these different food plans together so they can learn from each other. I have to say, and, and I'm not a native Vermonter, but I have to say that Vermont is way ahead of the others. Vermont plan is really fabulous. Uh, Vermont pulled together people from all across the state and created 25 goals, and they track each of those goals with a number of indicators so you can go online and see exactly how we're doing in Vermont in meeting each of those goals. And by meeting them, sometimes it means uh, pulling together people in different non-governmental organizations. Sometimes it means enacting new policy. We just enacted a new food waste policy. So nobody, no supermarket, restaurant can dump out food anymore. Food waste is completely prohibited from any large um, uh, facility. And soon, I think within two years, 
households won't be able to dump out food waste. It all has to be composted. If there's anything that's usable uh, for people, it has to be sent to people who can use it. And as you can imagine, that's a logistical nightmare. People are still struggling with that one. How we get food that's surplus from the people who have created the surplus to the people who really need it, especially in a very rural state where it's kind of hard to get around for a good part of the year. But um, if it doesn't go to people, it has to go to compost and then um, animals and then compost and then energy production. So that's where all of this is Act 148 in Vermont. Uh, maybe you can do the same thing in Massachusetts. You should be able to, really. I, I think dealing with surplus food has really come on people's radars as people have realized how much food we waste in this country, between 30 and 40 percent approximately. So we're also, through this commitment to racial equity, we uh, appointed three ambassadors, very um, well-respected people of color. One is a state senator in Connecticut, one runs a farmer's organization in Rhode Island, and one is uh, in Boston. And they go out and talk with communities of color about the, the problems in our food system and advantages of adopting a healthier food system and working toward this New England food vision. We also have did a process of collective system mapping. And, and that really pulled out the nerd in me. I loved it. Some people said this was kind of uh, mind-boggling. But I'll show you just a few slides from it. And finally, Food Solutions New England has created a system of uh, a leadership institute for emerging leaders. This is the first group of leaders. And as you can see, we, there's a real uh, attention to bringing in people of color, as well as the, the Caucasians, the whites, who are doing most of the farm ownership and most of the work on farm organizations in New England now. So system mapping, the whole purpose of our system mapping was to figure out where are the points of intervention? How can we actually get to the New England food vision? We know what we want to see, but how do we get there? So we started out figuring out, well, who's involved? Who has a stake in this? And in one sense, it's everybody. But there's some people who have a lot of expertise about those different parts. For instance, we talked to a fellow who used to be the CEO of Stop and Shop. He's now at Harvard Business School. We talked to him about how supermarkets fit into this vision and how they can become real contributors to the vision instead of... Um, this kind of separate system that's out there on the side. We talked to people who are working in the anti-hunger community. We talked to researchers. We talked to people working with government. And that helped us understand the different parts of the system. And then we put those parts together into a whole. And then, all together, we did a participatory leverage point identification process. This probably sounds completely mysterious, but let, let me show you a few slides. This, like. this was the diagram that we put together over on the left, this giant diagram of all the different parts of our food system, ranging from NGOs to philanthropists to state agencies of agriculture, all the people who are involved. And then we broke it down. For instance, uh, well, well, actually, this doesn't show that well, but there are parts of it that dealt with policy. And there are parts of it that dealt with markets and marketing, distribution of food. And we went around and s talked about the, what we had learned from the, the interviews with experts. That's what's up here on the top. Uh, we went around, talked about these subsections of the big map, and here's another picture. There's Chris Coffin and Niaz Dori, uh, who runs the, the Northeast Atlantic Marine Alliance. Um, we, we sort of looked at the map and said, well, is anything missing? Can, can we see how all this works? 
after folks have gone out and interviewed all these experts and put together this big diagram for us, does it really make sense to us? And we noodled with it for three days. So you can probably understand why some people were feeling, oh, this is way too much. But I loved it. I've, I've been, um, I studied systems ecology as a, that, that was my doctorate. So having a whole group of people working on a system together and trying to understand that system so it makes sense to everybody in the room, I thought was wonderful. This is what we came up with, that what we need are, these are our leverage points in the system. We need to have democratic empowerment of people in New England. We need to have people who are able to vote for what's best for themselves and for our community and our states and our region as a whole. We need a different narrative. We need a different food story. Instead of telling ourselves and telling each other, well, it's fine to be getting our food from all over the world. Isn't this wonderful? We need to be talking about the advantages of investing in a regional food system and building up our capacity right here. We also need to have an ecologically sound, equitable, and vibrant economy. So these food businesses that we're investing in need to be contributing to economic growth for impoverished communities. I was telling somebody before the talk about a, a book, um, The Town That Food Saved, about a little town in Vermont, Hardwick, uh, Vermont, which basically has just re-energized its whole economy around food businesses. It's really quite remarkable. I, okay. I, I took a group of students up to visit, and I was so impressed with what they're doing. It was amazing. So this also shows some of the, the indicators that we need to show what we're doing. Um, and I won't spend more time on that, but that, that was basically what we came up with after we sifted that huge diagram down into the, the pathways that make the most sense for changing that food system. Where are the critical points to intervene to make the New England food vision a reality? And we decided it was these three points. And together, it creates a food system where everyone can participate with dignity. And there's a picture. Uh, since, since that diagram, as you can imagine, is not all that easy for people to understand, and we can't just put it up on a, on a, a poster and everybody immediately says, ah, yes, I get it, democratic empowerment. That's what we need. And we need a, a new business case for a regional food system. We created this, this poster that shows people using these different things, like the new food story, a sustainable e economy, new leaders, which is exactly what the, the Food Systems Leadership Institute is creating, a new business case so that businesses want to build around this, this regional food economy. And I kind of like it. It's a nice poster. So this is where we are now. This is bringing us up to the present. I said the, the uh, vision was published in 2014. It's gotten an amazing amount of, of coverage. Brian's gone out and given uh, a multitude of talks as the, the lead author. Others who were, were authors on the food vision have also talked about it in different places. There have been, well, well just this summer, uh, there's a natural resource conservation group up in Burlington, Vermont, a statewide group that's pulling together all the, the different CONCOMs, conservation commissions around the state. They want Brian to come in and talk about the New England Food Vision. Um, it has contributed to state policy. The Rhode Island Food Policy ha is really trying to implement the vision. Fortunately, we had somebody who's very... Um, uh, up there and active in Rhode Island state politics who's on the, the vision team. So he helped to keep this in front of uh, legislators in Rhode Island. But we created these three teams around the three different strategies. And then at our last meeting, which was in June, 
we decided from these teams that, that there are at least five things that we need to be doing. One is to keep working on this new narrative and figure out how to, how to change the way people think and talk about our food system. We also decided we want to put together a people's food policy guide, sort of modeled on the indivisible guide, if anybody has seen that. But it's a way that people can engage in food policy at the state level. We want to start creating reports of the state of New England's food system. So just like Vermont has this very detailed website with goals and indicators, we want to be showing exactly what's happening with all of the goals that are implicit in the New England food vision. We want to create a kind of umbrella legislation, a little bit like Shelley Pingree's uh, act. Some of you are probably familiar with it. She's a, a state representative from Maine who's been very progressive, n national representative from Maine. And she initiated something like the food farming and I, I can't remember the, the title of it, but it, it's gotten a lot of traction in, in the House of Representatives. Uh, and we also want to start working more closely with groups that are a little hard to talk with, who have not fully embraced the vision so far. Groups that are, are pretty soundly entrenched in traditional agriculture in New England, like the dairy industry. Uh, so we want to start holding meetings with them and talking about some of these, these difficult sticking points that might be holding them up. And what you can do, you can be helping to create that new story. You can download the vision. I brought along a copy. And, and I wish I had a whole stack of these that I could just be handing out because it's a beautiful little booklet. Um, but you can get this. You can download it online if you just go to Food Solutions New England. It's a PDF, and you can print it out, read the whole thing. You can also, if, if you don't like the numbers, the spreadsheets are right there online. And you can tinker with them. You can say, well, actually, I'd rather have a lot more nuts, and I'd like to be growing a lot more grains in New England. I think New England should be growing all its own wheat. If, if you feel strongly about that, tinker with it. And you can, you, you can actually plug it in, show you how much land it takes to grow enough wheat for 17 million people, and you, you'll be surprised. It's actually quite a lot of land. Well, those of you who are farmers won't be the, the least bit surprised. Um, so you can be working on that new food story and drawing on the vision if that's appropriate. You can always buy New England products. That's a good way to support the vision right now. You can be working to save farmland from development. We have a very active uh, regional group of American Farmland Trust who's doing fantastic